The 1940s were dominated by World War II. When Grandpa was my age, 25, he was honorably discharged from the Army, having served as a technical sergeant in the 82nd Airborne Division. Here is a copy of his discharge papers. Last year, on July 4th, an article about his service and a trip to the World War II Memorial through Honor Flight appeared in the West Orange Chronicle. Here is Grandpa Walter in the paper with Aunt Michelle. Walter's first stop overseas, among many while a soldier, brought him to Casablanca. From there, he traveled through Tunis, Sicily, Naples, Belfast, and the beaches of Normandy and Brussels. As part of the 82nd Airborne, Grandpa Walter was one of the first glider troopers in United States history. He took part in two legendary battles, the Battle of the Bulge, and he landed in Normandy two days before D-Day. The 82nd Airborne was instrumental in World War II, and Walter, Grandpa Walter, was a big part of that. Through his amazing military career, he has received many honors, such as the Bronze Star Medal, Good Conduct Medal, European African Middle East Medal, and six Bronze Stars. Grandpa gave his time, strength, and his heart to the country, and he is a true American hero. <clears throat> The year was 1949. He had been married for three years. And I'm actually going to improvise for a second. This is not, is not on here, but um, as you all may know, he was married at the Waldorf Astoria, which was unheard of at the time. <laughs> and uh, he met his wife, Gloria, on a blind date. You may have all heard that they were going to go to the movies if she wasn't attractive, or go out dancing if she was and they went dancing that night. Um, so then when he was my age, his life changed dramatically because my mother, his first child, Allison, was born. As typical of the times, the baby boom was underway. Life expectancy was 71 for women and 65 for men. The average salary was $2,992. Which is the average salary today. <laughs> <laughs> shelter plans were widely available. So all you do age Walter became Walter became my age in 1972. This was the year that some big life-changing events occurred. He added father-in-law to his repertoire. His daughter Allison married Bruce. The following year, Zeman's department store was closed after decades of being in business. Although it wasn't long, it's, it just seemed like a long year before he started a new career. He became an auditor for the state of New Jersey, a job he loved from the moment he started it. Soon after, when Walter turned 59, his first grandchild, Erica, was born. Some timely info about this period. The national debt was $382 billion. Major trends included a growing influence of the women's movement, a heightened concern for the environment, and increased space exploration. Families vacationed in station wagons, and everyone wanted an RV. Mood rings, lava lamps, Rubik's cubes, and pet rocks all captured the imagination of Americans during this decade. The wildest fad surely was streaking nude through very public places. I've heard a lot of stories. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, uh, what Howie skipped in his portion, he was very nice, is that I was asked to help out in Siemens department store that year, and then shortly after they closed. <laughs> connection there. But anyway, Walter was about my age in 1983. That year, his first and only grandson, Gregory, was born. I know you. A year after that, Michelle and Howie were married. Min minimum wage was $3.10, and the average salary was about $12,000. A BMW cost $12,000. Shop till you drop was the watchword, except for, except for house. No, for my mother. That oh, was for, her, right. her model. <laughs> Glory, right. Uh, 20 million people a week attended movies, and popular movies included Stand By Me, 
Peggy Sue Got Married, and The Revenge of the Nerds. The Oscar winner in 1983 was Terms of Endearment. Most people, <clears throat> most people remember the tragic consequences of January 28, 1986, when the Space Challenger blew up. Paradoxically, Howie was calling people and asking, did you hear the news? And they responded, isn't it terrible? But of course, Howie was referring to the birth of Jessica, which happened just as the Challenger was lifting off. 1986 was also the year Ailey Wiesel received the Nobel Peace Prize. There was a nuclear reactor accident in Chernobyl, and Walter fervently watched the tennis matches at Wimbledon, where Martina Navratilova beat Hanna Mandikova in straight sets, and Boris Becker defeated even, uh, Ivan Lendl. Three years later, Marissa was born. And another two years after that, in 1991, when Cousin Walter was about my age, no, that's, that's not my age. <laughs> he retired from the state of New Jersey. Walter and I go back a long, long way. <clears throat> I mean, since we were about five years of age, the two of us. But see, with the whole of my age, we were celebrating it in California. But now it's October, and close by, we're in California again, and we're in April to celebrate it right now. So that's what it's really all about. And I'll show you a picture of Wally and I at Ohio State when we were, when we were the students. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I read the letter and I got so upset. I had to close the door.